Hey folks, this is James. Welcome to another tutorial. This is an offset style looping animation. This is all being driven by the distance of these faces as well as some color ramps to determine the actual animation and the color values. So you can get a ton of different variations there. All in a nice procedural setup. So let's make a start on the tutorial. Start by adding a cube. Add a new geometry nodes network. Delete that first node and replace it with a grid. I'm going to bump up the size of that, so 4x4. Four four. And 40x40 40 40 vertices. Just going to put the wireframe on there. So what I want to do is merge by distance on point 0.2. That gives you mostly triangles. You can then run that through the dual mesh to get a more interesting pattern of n-gons. Next I want to extrude that out. Make sure that's on individual. I put the offset scale on zero. And really you do have the faces on top of each other. You use that as the basis of the inset. So scale elements. Use that top selection we just created into the selection. Put the scale down to 0.8. As you can see that's just giving you an inset on each of those faces. So now I want a second extrude and use that top selection again and you can see what you're getting there. I can hide the wireframe, outline selected, put the cavity in world mode and valley all the way up. So what I want to do now is have the timeline drive this extrude. So I want it going from 0 to 1 over a range of 4 seconds. So change your timeline to 0 to 119 at 30 frames a second. And that's giving you a four second loop. So you want your scene time. And that frame's going to drive this. But to get it into the range we want, you can use a math node. And divide the frame by 120. So this is going to equal your frame range that into the offset scale. So by the time we got to 120, it will be one in the extrude. Problem is it keeps going. So shift D that and change that to fraction. And what that does is basically gives you the value after the decimal point. So when it gets to the end, it'll snap back to zero. Because 120 divided by 120 is 1.0, and it's giving you the 0, 0.0 at the end. So next thing I want to do there, get a more interesting animation. So rather than just going up, you want it going up and then back down. 
So think of this color ramp as like your timeline. Everything stays in that zero to one range, but you can use extra knots to determine how the animation goes over time. So you put a third knot in there, make that black, hit play, and you can see it goes up and back. Now change that to ease, and you're gonna get the ease in and out, essentially of those keyframes. I'm going to come back to this later, but that's fine for the moment. So to get the offset animation happening, you want different faces to be going up and down at different times. So because they're all being fed with that same frame number, if we can offset that frame, you get different extrudes. So math add, then you want the position, vector math, put that in distance mode, and put that into the add. It slightly does something there, but it's too small a value. So because the distance the largest one's going to be about 0 to 2. What we want to do this, remap that. And say 0 to 2 is 0 to 100. So now, depending on the distance of that initial face, you can see it's getting a different extrude. Take that a little bit further, I'm going to put some randomization there. I'm going to shift D that add, add a random value, that 0 to 20. And so it doesn't matter what values you put in here. It will loop seamlessly. Okay, so now I'm going to put some materials onto this. Open up your shader editor. And I'm just going to put that in workbench mode. Let's put some AO on there, three and three. And screen space reflections. Add the default material. Make that a red color. And see it's not applying it. You have to use a node for that. So set material node, put that on red. And you can see it's changed everything to red. So on a second material, I'm going to call that top. And I'm going to apply that at the very end. Set material top. See it's overwritten the red, but if you put that top in there into the selection, getting just the faces of that last extrude. Now is the final finishing touch. What I want to do is take this value from the color ramp up into the shader. So store named attribute. This is basically creating a custom attribute. I'm going to call it CC Put it on the face and bring this in here. Now I am actually bringing in a color into a float 
It doesn't really matter because it's grayscale anyway. And then whatever you've used here, you want to mirror it up in the shader. So attribute CC factor into the base color. And as you can see, when it gets to the top, it's white and black at the bottom. It's basically mirroring exactly what's happening here. I'm just going to put that through a color ramp. Let's do an orange to a pink. And see the end result. Just make that a little bit sharper. I want to change the animation to make that a little bit more interesting. As I said earlier, if you think of this as your timeline, anything you do here will be mirrored. So if you bring those black ones in a little bit, they'll actually sit there at the bottom. So you basically got a hold. And then you put another knot in there at white. It's just going to sit there for that amount of time. So you can get all sorts of variations out of that. You can even have that coming back down. And up again. Okay, so that's the end of the tutorial. Thanks for watching.